I'm going to take a look at the working in engineering online um, end of semester exam which I had set and which was done in December I use Coology to do it now what we're looking at is a course which I created in Schoology I call it examination room for working in engineering December 28 and this is the exam you will see here unpublished and here there is a 10 digit code now I had various options of hiding this thing from students I created the cor course but the students would not be able to access this course this examination room unless I give them this 10 digit code now I could have given them the 10 digit code but then I would have hid the examination this this examination from them it is hidden from them it's unpublished I could publish it could say here publish and it's only after it's published that they would be able to see it no let me click on the exam the thing is I'm going to look at the settings and even if it's published I could have them um, see the exam but they wouldn't be able to see the answer here submissions are enabled I could disable the submissions save changes and in this mode the students would not be able to see the questions alright now I'm going to rem um, have submissions disabled I'm going to make it remain disabled for now now let me see other settings first of all let me see the questions now I did this because City and Gills Ex end of year examination their external exam is 40 questions 40 multiple choice questions online they don't use Schoology they have their own system but I find that Schoology is very good it has a lot of um, a lot of features which are very good for, for setting and issuing a multiple choice examinations this has 30 multiple choice examination I put only 30 there because it's an end of semester one and we're only halfway through the syllabus now let me look back at settings the instruction that I put was to answer all questions because I th there isn't much to be said and I was there to speak to them in the examination room time limit I'd set a time limit of 60 quest 60 seconds or 60 minutes I should say I had set a time limit of 60 minutes I could have clicked no no time limit and they would have all day to do it if they wanted I had set 60 minutes because generally city and girls give two minutes per questions for their um for their multiple choice exams attempt limit one time I could have set it so that they could attempt up to 20 times but once they submit their, 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 their test they wouldn't be able to do it again unless of course I increase the number of times that they could do it randomize order yes what this means is that each student will see a different question for question one what the student sees for question two might be what somebody else will see for question 30 and what somebody else might see for question 25 and so on so it shuffles the questions so it's not like someone with their question one can look across at the other person's computer screen and see what they click for the answer and then answer it 
right? That's one form of um, security to, to to discourage attempts to cheat. Use page breaks or one question per page. I could have set it so that students see only one question for the screen, then they would have to click an icon to go to the next question. But I've um, allowed them to be able to see several questions on the same screen. Alright, question review? No. That means after they um, click submit, they wouldn't be able to see what questions they got right and wrong. Reasonable? Yes. What this means is that if there's a power cut or in interruption in internet service, when they get back online, whatever question they've answered, they remain answered because the system would have saved what they did already. So they can resume and continue. If they had reached 15 minutes when the power cut happened, then when power comes back, they could resume from the 15 minutes onwards and they would see the question that they have reached and those that have, they have answered would have been saved as being answered already. View submissions, yes. What, what I did was to set this so that when the student click submit, they would be able to see their score, how much they got out of the 30 as well as a percentage. I did that because that's what City and Gills does. They're able to see their grades immediately after they um, click submit and thereby submitting what they did. Let me preview this thing. A preview allows me to see what the student would see when they're answering the questions. Start new attempt. Now, <coughs> this is a screen that the students would see and they would be able to click on their, um, their they would be able to click the various options for them to answer. I could change my mind about B and C here. This is saying show instructions, answer all question, one point, one point, so I had set one point for each question. I could have set two or three depending on how hard the question was. Here, I'm looking at my countdown, the time left for this assessment, 59 seconds counting, 59 minutes counting down. All right, so they have one hour within which to finish this, um, this exam. When they reach a point where they answer all questions, or if they're not able to answer all questions and time is running out, they click submit. Here, you are viewing this question in preview mode. This is for me. All right? The answer will not be saved and cannot be reviewed. So I'm, able, I'm not able to click submit because this is not the real, this is not a real exam. I'm not a student. I'm only previewing the exam. All right. The next thing I want to look at are results. This page is asking you to confirm that you want to leave. Data you have entered may not be saved. Okay, leave page. Results. I want to see the results. Now, I, as a tutor, I'm able to see this. The students can't. I'm looking at view by student. And these are my students. These are how much they got out of 30. And then percentage below that. So... Um, first of all, I, let me say if at this point that you're viewing this video online, but I've not shared it with the public because one is able to see this, the, the names of the students. So for privacy and ethical reasons, this is not shared with the public. All right. Now, Sherry Boswell got 20 out of 30, which is 66.67%. Giovanni Bryan, he got 24 out of 30, which is 80%, 80 out of 100, and so on. 
let me view the attempt view attempts well there was only one attempt now this is one attempt the time when it started and date the time and date when it was completed the time the student took to do it 17 minutes and 30 seconds the score All right I could view and edit the score if I wanted to that is if something went wrong with the student and I think that they deserve a 25 or did not deserve 24 out of 30 I could edit I could unsubmit as well if the student was not supposed to do the exam I unsubmit what they did this will sh allow students to resume the submission each user can only have one unsubmitted completion at a time all right let me get back back to view by students now I'm going to look at view by question let me look at view by question here question one ask who is responsible for the place of work and the points earned all right now there's one point points earned most and least either one or zero now the average out of one is 0.19 what this really means is what percentage or what proportion of students got this right but I could see more detail in the stats see stats for question one no answer one no here 75 percent everyone at your uh, let me let me try and look back at this question this is saying that this is the right answer and Sherry Boswell got this question wrong because she could be Devani Bryan he got it wrong because he clicked D all right and I'm able to see all of these details on what the students did with question one Raheem Donaldson got it right many students got this wrong and I'm able to look at this and see how each person did on this um, this particular question here you're looking at this this was me pretending to be a student when I was testing it out all right now let's look at this thing let's look at this thing again if you see that if you look at Al J Davis um, question this is question one for him self-employed was a Rajay Delisa a was the client this person a was everyone at your workplace so you you see that this started out Al J Davis what Al J Davis saw in question one was a self em self employed and so on b the client c employers d everyone Rajay Delisa saw a starting with the client what Al J Davis saw as b was what Rajay Delisa saw as a Al J Davis saw b as the client Rajay Delisa saw a as the client D for Al J Davis was everyone at your place of work. The everyone at your place of work for Al J Davis was B. Now how that happened is that I chose for the options to be shuffled as well. For question one, I chose to shuffle the options so that while one person saw their A B C in a certain order a certain part a certain options given the other person their ABC was different for the same question all right so that's another added layer of security 
So not only were the questions mixed up and shuffled, but the options also were mixed up and shuffled. Now, let's continue looking at this thing. View by question. That was question one. I could look here and say question two. What happened in question two? View responses. So I could look at each question and see how the students did for each question. Now let's look back at this. Question one, what proportion of students got it right? 0.19 out of one. Question two, point eight one out of one. That means question one was really hard and question two was easy. So I could go back and look at the topic and say the topic that question one covered I need to review that topic with the students to make them learn more because um, they generally perform uh, poorly with that particular topic. All right. Now, these are just some of the up some of the features that I found useful with Schoology, and which I had applied in in um, the end of semester exam. But just before we finish, I want to look at one last thing. I want to finish off, but I want to look at one last thing. This asks me to run Adobe Flash. Let me allow Adobe Flash to run and see what this is saying. This is showing the bell curve, the normal curve for the overall performance of the students. The average grade was around 70, showing that it was a fairly easy exam for them. Only a few, well, the low marks, a few students got low marks, a lot got the higher marks. Here, this is telling me number of grades. The maximum point was 100%. The highest grade was 90. Lowest grade was 10. Well, that was for me when I was um, testing it out. I had clicked on only a few questions. But the students got um, generally more than 50%. Well, all of them got more than 50%. So all of them passed this exam. Average, it to tells me the average. The standard deviation, the median, and the modal um, score. So it analyzes, Schoology analyzes the, the results as well. So I don't want to take up any more of your time, but you can see the features um, that are available in Schoology. And I would hope that. Well, I plan to offer more, more um, multiple choice exams in yeah, using Schoology. Hope that the college will adapt or use Schoology or some equivalent to it. I know that C C um, CXC is talking about online e-testing where they would have all multiple choice exams be done online and maybe the CCCJ would be doing that as well um, in the near future because that's the way things are going alright so that's it for now